Now, my next guest is a former Love Island and Strictly star turned documentary maker. And having investigated subjects from revenge porn to disordered eating, Zara McDermott's now looking at the rise of armchair detectives and the problems they caused following the Idaho University murders in 2022. Zara, this is so interesting because this was a particularly brutal case. Four students killed in their sort of student house as such. Um, police, um, of course, got to work in this very small town of I Idaho. But whilst they were working, trying to find the killer, um, over two billion people online were also trying to do their job for them. And you were one of them. I was as well. I was so aware of this tiny little place in Idaho that I'd never heard of before, but everyone wanted to get a part of it. What, to find out what the next part of the information was, it, it, it just everyone was hooked on it and you felt that way, it consumed your time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, how social media algorithms work is that they kind of feed you the same topic and the same information that you've been consuming. So my social media was completely full of this case. And I think the issue was with the, with the police as well, you know, they were really stuck in a situation where any bit of information that they released everyone online was jumping onto it. Two billion hits on social media, that is a lot of people, a lot of eyes on this case. And it essentially was a kind of wild west for the armchair detectives. Mm, which is why you wanted to do this documentary, yeah. because you felt that you, you were consumed by it and you wanted to know why is it, what was it about this case particular that sort of seemed to really grasp people's attention. Um, the social media obsession, it was, it was intense for the, the whole way through and police, in fact, had to set up a misinformation site to try and, in some way, squash all of these false accusations and stories because innocent people end up then getting hurt. Mm -hmm. It was... Um... It was quite, you know, scary actually watching on and seeing person after person each day get accused of, you know, this is a quadruple homicide. This is not just a small crime. And it's quite scary to think that, you know, you Google anyone's name now who was in the frame at any point on social media and this will forever come up with their name. It's, it's, it's really scary. Because there was one um, guy that, he was called the hoodie guy, wasn't yes. he? that he got spotted in the back of one of like a CCTV kind of image. Yeah. And people then, okay, well, it's got to be him. And they, they find out his name, his mm -hmm. family's details. It was all over online. And, yeah. and they, they went through a terrible time and he was absolutely nothing to do with the case. Yeah, absolutely. And the police ruled him out quite quickly. And I remember watching the press conference where the police said, this guy has absolutely nothing to do with it. And that wasn't enough for the armchair detectives on social media. They were saying, well, well, how? Why have you ruled him out? They wanted answers because they desperately wanted someone to be arrested for this, for this murder. Um, and, you know, six weeks later, someone was arrested, but it was someone who no one had even thought about. No one even knew about this person. He lived thousands of miles away, didn't he? He lived actually in another state. Mm. It actually wasn't too far away. It was only about 15 minutes down the road. We actually... We actually did the route that he would have taken. Um, but, yeah, he was at a different university um, and no-one suspected him. And it just shows that, you know, I don't think anyone quite knew what they were looking at and where they were looking. But there is an obsession with true crime generally now, Absolutely. isn't there? And you met quite a few of these online detectives whilst um, filming over there. One in particular was really quite interesting, wasn't he? Yes. Um, there was one, in one sleuth in particular um, who makes up to eight... Um, videos a day on their YouTube channel about this case. And there's actually literally not that much information out there on this case. So the fact that they were churning out all of these videos, content after content, you know, how much of that was misinformation? How much of that was clickbait? And also, you know, it kind of begs the question, what incentivizes them? And, and realistically, this is their career, this is how they make their money and how they make their living. Mm -hmm, of course. Although their argument also is, well, the more eyes on a case, the better. Yes, and they call themselves truth-seeking sleuths. They say they want to get to the truth and they want to get to the bottom of it. But, you know, how much are they a help or are they a hindrance? Yeah. I think that's an interesting question. Well, we certainly saw a version of it here, didn't we, with the terrible, sorry uh, story of Nicola Bully Absolutely. here. And even in more recent times with, with Kate, Princess Catherine, and, mm -hmm. and lots of people online, lots of... You know, where is she? What's happened? That sort of kicked off again. People seem to... Once you go down the rabbit hole, you can't get back out of it. Um, the, six weeks after... 
after the, the murders, I think it was, or six to eight weeks, there was a student, as you say, was arrested, indicted four counts of first degree murder, one kind of felony burglary, motive is unknown, so it's still, there's mm -hmm. lots of stuff online and the online sleuths are not letting it go anytime no. soon. Um, it's so interesting. I think it's because we garner our news in such a different way to young people in particular. It's not mainstream platforms anymore. It's, no, it's, it's online and it's so interesting. Are you feeling very home doing the documentary thing now, Zara? Is this, is this where you feel really comfortable? I mean, we, you know, Love Island, of course, glamour and Strictly, all of those things yeah. is something very different. I know it is and, and it's, it's a completely, I suppose I would say new world, but it's really not for me. I mean, I started developing revenge porn my first documentary in May 2019. So coming up to five years, I've been doing this now. Um, I've made quite a lot of documentaries now. I've got a bit of a portfolio together, um, a lot of which are being shown in schools as part of the PSHE yeah. curriculum, which is incredible. Um, this is my career. This is my life. I throw everything into these documentaries. This is this one, the Idaho one, is my first creator credit mm -hmm. on a documentary. So I actually pitched this and... and wrote the treatment and everything myself, and I've been working really closely with the BBC. Um, so this is kind of a new step in my career. I hope to be a director one day. Well, well, why, why not? <laughs> you're, you're clearly on the way up with all of us though. It's a really, really interesting documentary, The Idaho Murders, um, trial by TikTok. You can catch it now, of course, on BBC iPlayer, like you say. Lovely to see you, Zara. Thank you're heading to Ibiza with your next one. That's yes. all filmed. We'll see that later in the yes, year. Yes, in the I'm spring, guessing. yes. OK, that could be interesting. It's a really good I watch. bet it was. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank Good to see you.